You've written about the role of the White House and the press secretaries in relation to the press, and that uh, the best press secretaries were brokers between the journalists trying to get the truth on behalf of the American people and the, the person in power and, and the responsibility. And who believed in the truth, really, who basically had some sense of credibility. It's an impossible job to be press secretary. Right. You wear t two hats, you really do. I mean, you were a spokesman for the president, for the federal government, for the American people. One, that's one hat. And the other is, is to try to convey the information to the, through the press, which is a transmission belt. And so it seems like in the 1980s with Deaver and Reagan and continuing especially to today, something changed. It was no longer, it was less a broker, and more and more with each passing year, less a broker and more of an, uh, uh, an employee of the president uh, putting out the message in, in, and not telling you much else besides the message and not helping the press all that much, being adversarial almost. Uh, I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but no. what, what happened in the last five or ten years with You with tell me the, the, passivity, <laughs> the passivity of the right. American people amid lies, the passivity of the press knowing they were lies and saying nothing. I don't know whether it was the corporate heads playing ball with the White House or whatever, but there definitely was a change in terms of our, our moral compass. When did it start? Do you have a view, since you've seen more history than most people up close? Well, I think 9-11 was the, the uh, uh, moment of truth in, that, in those terms, the turning point. Uh, people, uh, reporters were afraid to be called un-American, unpatriotic. Their bosses also wanted us to play ball. We were in a very crisis situation. Nobody knew what was going to happen. So they could justify the national security. And as a result, there was a deep silence for months when it was so clear. I mean, this president did not lie basically in terms of we were going to war from the day he stepped foot into the White House. The neocon, it was, they, they were finally, they finally sold their project for a new American century to President Bush, which says we can take the whole Middle East. We're the only military superpower in the world. Nobody can defy us. Uh, go into Iraq first, it'll be a cakewalk, four days, and you come home, live happily ever after. The reporters in the press room astounded me. Maybe it's their youth or whatever. They were so gung-ho to go to war. And you say, well, what did the Iraqis do? Nothing. 